I think everyone can relate to that video. We've become so absorbed in our virtual worlds that we block out the real one. And I thought, surely there's a better way. But I couldn't find one, so I built it myself. And that is not as ridiculous as it sounds. The worldwide maker community, the culture of building things from hobbyist parts, has enabled everyone to be an inventor. I called the project I created Swirlesque, and it consists of an intelligent glove and a smartphone app. The glove can recognize hand gestures that I make, and communicating with the smartphone, it has the potential to connect to any device that makes up the Internet of Things, and that is essentially any device that can connect to the Internet. The glove is embedded with an accelerometer to measure the apparent acceleration due to gravity. An Arduino microcontroller, a miniature computer, will then take this data and apply trigonometry to reconstruct the three-dimensional position of the glove. When I came to the stage in development, we hadn't been taught trigonometry yet, as I was at the start of year 10. <laughs> so I had to learn it myself. To recognize my hand gestures, I developed a custom algorithm that runs on the glove. This algorithm was extremely challenging to design, as it has to effectively recognize the hand gestures that I make while running on the relatively low-powered microcontroller. When a gesture is identified, it will notify the smartphone via Bluetooth which will then perform an action depending on which mode has been selected in the interface. If the action is outside the scope of the smartphone, to control an Internet of Things device, for example, the, the application can trigger an HTTP GET request. This sounds quite complicated, but it's basically loading a web page. However, if this web page is hosted on another smart device, then by passing parameters with that request, through an HTTP query string, it can control that device. This is an expandable way of controlling the Internet of Things. To start using the prototype, all I need to do is put on the glove. Turn it on. Start the smartphone app. and press the on button. When I select the commute mode in the smartphone app, the gestures I perform will be mapped to the Android music player. No wires, simple as that. When I select the home mode in the interface, the same gestures will control iTunes on the computer. You can see the songs playing. I can even skip tracks. And I can control the volume. So I'll pause that. Now imagine you're in your living room and you want to show your family some pictures on your TV. If I select the gallery mode, I can navigate this gallery with nothing but my hand gestures. So as you can see, this is an extremely natural way of interacting with a computer. But what if you wanted to control something real, something tangible? As you can see, I'm controlling a light. Controlling a light is a very simple procedure. But this light, this is a metaphor for any electrical device you can imagine. But now, one more thing. Imagine you're in a business meeting and you need to show your colleagues a PowerPoint. I 
I can now navigate the interface of this computer with nothing but my hand gestures. And I can now run this PowerPoint. <laughs> the applications of this technology are endless. Imagine a world where you could control your air conditioning. You could flick lights on and off with the flick of your wrist. You could swipe through the channels on your smart television. You could change your physical environment around you by controlling your house. And people with physical disabilities could have a more natural way of controlling the everyday things that we take for granted, like operating an elevator, for example. Over the last few decades, the entire way that we think about knowledge has changed as a result of the internet. I'm growing up in a world where ideas and knowledge can be shared and accessed instantly, and that encourages knowledge to be free. I created this prototype over eight months as a Year 10 student, with nothing and all my knowledge in computer programming and electronics is self-taught. And that would have been impossible 20 years ago. Creativity comes from the opportunity to create something new from the existing knowledge and technology around us. And the accessibility of these new resources are allowing a new wave of worldwide innovation. Thank you.